Welcome to Ask a Puppy Trainer Show. This is episode number 95. Woo. I'm Bethany, this is Sparky. This, look at this, this is Lucy. She's a little bit older, she's like about a year. She's a rescue. And stands like a little human. <laughs> She's so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, um, we're going to jump right in. If you have any uh, questions, you can put them in the comments below. Just try to include the age and breed of your puppy. And it needs to be under two years old, preferably under one and a half. <laughs> write it, write it the, for age. The advice we give will differ greatly for yes. a young dog versus an older dog. And anything over a year and a half is considered an older dog. Bingo, an older adolescent puppy. Old okay. dog. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Nikki says, any tips for place duration training? My six-month-old corgi, oh, we know Nikki. My six-month-old corgi puppy, she knows the command, but she gets so antsy after five to ten minutes. I use his meal to treat him, but it's not high value enough for him to want to stay. The bed is right next to me on the floor in our living room while I sit on the couch, so it is low distraction. You just so you guys know, you sitting is often. Do it. Get, get on camera, Lucy. Um, just so you guys know, when you sit down and you're doing place duration with a dog, um, that can be high distraction for them because you're relaxed. You're not standing up and taking command of the moment anymore. But anyway, should I switch to higher value rewards? Nope. No. Hey, so we're on the same page. And you, um, and that way he's more inclined to stay on. Not at six months old, no. And higher value rewards will probably just create more excitement. Mm -hmm. You are not having your puppy make that decision of whether they stay on or not. You're helping to make that decision for them. So mm -hmm. every time they take one step near the edge of the cot or the bed or whatever you're using, we prefer cots because the elevated dog bed makes it a bit easier to create a stronger boundary. It can, But when yeah. they step to the edge of that cot, you are going to, well, hopefully I don't throw my mic off, stand up, move in, and back them off the edge of that cot, take a step back, pause, and slowly, if you can, sit back down. What do you do with on the leash? On your chair or on the couch. Oh, thank you. Leash, pressure up, out, towards them to back them away from you more towards more towards the edge of the or more towards the middle of the cot. So as you're moving, like as you're stepping in, like mm -hmm. he said, your arm is resetting yep. your dog backwards. And don't be afraid to give your dog a little bump with your legs if they push back yes. at that boundary. You if don't want to control listen. only with leash. Yep. Leash is a second language for a dog. Body language is their primary language that they learn from their siblings, their mother, and any family members they've had. And if you've spent too much time rewarding your puppy every time they come up to you, just randomly, or too much time like this with Lucy, the boundary of body language for them, it gets, yeah, it gets really shaky, really blurred, and you want your dog to be sensitive to that spatial pressure. They already know the language, they just don't believe it with humans. They'll believe it with other animals, but they, they get, they just loosen up with humans because of how we treat dogs in our culture. So just keep that in mind, is that uh, you might get a dog that's more pushy. You might even have your dog, your puppy, bark at you because they're like, what are you doing? Yep. Just rinse and repeat, they have to stay on that. and. At six months old, and Nikki, I know you've been working with your corgi for a while. It's not like you just jumped in the, into this and decided you all of a sudden wanted a trained dog. You've put the work in, so you can be a bit firmer. Like, we just give guidance in the beginning with these younger puppies, but with your corgi, I'd be like, no. And just a firmer tone, I, well, I snap a lot of times, and just move in really, really uh, authoritatively. I do a snap, clap, and then I move in. I don't know why, but I do it every single time now. <laughs> every single time. Wow. Okay. So, um, what are you helping? She's, oh, she's eating you. the paper. <laughs> she wants you to know it tastes she's good. She's taste testing it. All right. We're going to do a series of questions. That's the person's name? Uh, let's see. Tammy Francine. She kind of used our little box several times. That way she could get all the info in. That's totally fine. 13 week old mini golden doodle. I've read and seen videos on where the crate should be placed in the home. The majority say it should be placed where the family spends a lot of time. But uh, my doubt is shouldn't, shouldn't it be placed in the same area even if you have little kids? Should it be placed? Okay. Will the puppy be able to rest in his crate? 
Look at Tammy. Look at that. Someone Great out there. Someone out there who can uh, use their critical thinking skills. I'm so happy to hear that you guys still exist out there, because uh, you're correct. <laughs> you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. And she also says, um, you know, if the children are playing or running around the house, uh, when should place command be taught? You know, as opposed to house, which is what we call crate. Um, so here's the thing. Yes, you're absolutely right. The more, even in crate. The more time your dog spins or uh, spins around your family moving around, if you work from home, kids moving around, the more uppity and overstimulated they're going to be, even if they don't seem like it. Um, I just recently had a, a 10 month old that was peeing all the time, drinking a ton of water. All I did was add crate duration away from everybody during the day where he could actually nap and his, his water consumption was cut in half. He was so, even though he was in a down, he wasn't chasing everybody around, but he watches everybody and he whines a lot. Overstimulated, panting, yeah, drooling. Just, and and he, he'll, he'll calm down and close his eyes and then someone could just scoop in their chair and he's staring at them to see, you know, if they want to talk to him. You know, he's an adolescent puppy. Yep. It literally cut water consumption in half and it just goes to show how overstimulated some, not all, I would say most, puppies can yeah, get probably 85 percent so here's here's what i like to do i am not as big of a fan as the playpen as this guy over here but i would either use the playpen or crate in the living area for shorter periods of time during the day like 30 minutes two to three times during the day the rest of the time there are big nap times at a 13 week old we're talking two hours three times a day in a different room, set it up quietly, like you're putting a baby to sleep, white noise machine, maybe the radio, dark room, where your puppy can get the rest that they need. But anyway, Tammy, it's really good to hear um, someone actually take the regular advice that they might come across and deduce that that doesn't totally make sense. Mm -hmm. And I read something about, you have toddlers, right? You yeah, little just kids. kids playing. So another thing I like to do is I like to stagger my crate time specific to their nap time. Not like they're sleeping at the same time, as in the puppies awake when your toddlers and your little kids are napping. So when your kids are napping, puppies awake, that's when you train them. That's when you walk them. Yep. That's when you give them 10, 15 minutes of your remaining 30 minutes. Or to at school. Some, what? Or at school. If or at school older. too, yeah, thank yeah, you. And then that's older. when they get their supervised separation. Yeah. You need time to work with your puppy. The puppy can't always come out and have time with the kids because the kids probably aren't training them, little kids especially, even older kids probably aren't doing what you can do for the dog yeah. and then teach them all the things they need to know. You're creating balance in your life and you need to have some time alone with your puppy to work with them. Are you and, Lucy? Yeah, so I can read What's the questions. Loose? As far as, uh, uh oh. She's got your mic. Uh oh. <laughs> She's a little heavy. <laughs> Lucy's family, come on now. Um, so as far as place goes, she real quick, that. to answer that, yes, I did. <laughs> to answer that, um, you should start teaching place right away. Just teach place as a, a target right away. You can go ahead and start blocking right away. What you can't expect right away is duration, which is basically a stay where your puppy stays in place for a long period of time. You need a couple more months before you can build up to that, but place should be taught right away. So go ahead and jump on that bandwagon. I'm gonna read some questions. Sorry if I'm scaring you all, getting close to here. I thought there was one before that. Let's scroll. Yeah, video request, but I think it's gone. Oh, go away. Okay, sorry, we can't do video <laughs> request because we are technological. I mean, we just finally got our we mics. We tried it last time. It, it just didn't work. I mean, we just got our we mics tried. working, guys. I mean, give us, give us a break. Okay. It only took us two years. <laughs> what does this say? Little Ray girl. Oh, that's so cute. My four-month-old Bernadoodle, Sheltie Doodle, Doodle. Come on. With the doodles, people, come on. Uh, barks a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I meant that sweetly. I, I burn it sounds adorable. Um, barks a lot, not in an aggressive way, but mostly when she wants attention. Yep. When you're busy. Yeah. That's She's the aggressively point. demanding. She's aggressively <laughs> demanding. Yeah. Um, how do I teach her to stop barking? when I want her to stop. You gotta teach her a no. And, and it's, I don't mean to make it sound that simple, but yeah, it's a no. It, you need to have value. Everyone just goes, thinks that their dog is gonna magically, uh, or thinks that they the should no. magically yeah. understand the firm tone and raising of the voice. 
And it's like, no, there's nothing behind it. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Dogs so, understand yelling through fear, not yeah. through understanding. Ooh. So to give value to a no, yes. you have to empower it with certain tasks. I need to write uh, that down. Body blocking, leash pressure, mm -hmm. redirection, um, training food work just to yeah. try to avoid a majority of it. That's what I want to know. It's like we could tell you the ways to just tell your puppy no through pressure up on the leash. Hey, cut it out, move in, redirect them to place, uh, pet corrector squirt, no. But none of those things, she liked me better? Oh, no, she's, she's laying, laying down. down. Okay, she's bye. Comfy. I thought she wanted to come to me. Don't cut my hand. Um, <laughs> we're, tra I, I we're, we're training. Lucy. We're I training. Lucy. This is what you do um, on your walks, guys. Steal her. I'm going to steal her. She is so, awesome. What, what, um, I want to make sure you're also doing is giving her the foundation she needs to understand that uh, what you're asking to back off and be calm because here's the thing you said when you're busy what about when you're not busy when you're not busy every time your puppy comes up to you are they getting a ton of free time first of all are they getting a ton of free time or even a little free time every time they come up to you do you pet them because if you are, your puppy's training you, and of course they're gonna bark at you if you're not giving them attention, yeah. right? Puppies don't live, nothing that you do with your puppy lives in a bubble or a vacuum. That's Bethany's learning there. I still, yeah. yes, I did. Yeah. But what that basically means that I can't pet them when they bark at one time and then not pet them at another time and have them understand that I'm busy. Yeah. You are always busy mm -hmm. when it comes to your puppy. What they get from you is earned, it's not demanded. Because we're always so busy, that we have time that we put aside for them and we seek them out for training. They don't seek it out from us for attention. So basically, if I've done a 15 minute training session, which should be happening two to four times a day with a four month old, uh, I'm gonna, if the puppy's calm after the training session, that's when I can give affection and then calm the puppy back down if I need to. If I wanna give the puppy affection, the puppy is already calm. Maybe not like this. This is like special level. That's why we got Lucy for this, because she knew she'd be awesome. easy. She knew she'd be I've easy. never seen her like this ever. Really? You haven't? Never. Oh my when gosh. You, when Kimberly grabbed her, I was like, oh, this is a bad thing. Really? No, oh. I didn't even know this existed. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal her. Um, but anyway, if Pretty you awesome. have a normal puppy, maybe Lucy's just having one of those days. It is rainy after all. <laughs> but anyway, uh, when you when you work with your when you're not working with your puppy, your puppy needs to already be calm. And then you can call your puppy over or go over to your puppy, share some affection, and then make sure you calm them back down. Mm -hmm. And when you do give them affection, do you see what we've been doing with Lucy? It's all slow, massage, sweet, not amping her up, not like in her face and petting her like this or fast scratchies. That's gonna get now her she likes you more. Now, yeah, that's gonna get her excited. You'll get my Lucy. So just make sure you're staying calm on, on that other front. So your puppy has a relationship relationship with you where when you do say no and you have some sort of reprimand it sticks rather than them just pushing through it because they don't believe you because you don't represent that okay I'm gonna do one more on here and then jump back to the other marble and me says hi there any tips with first meeting up with other dogs our chocolate lab will have her jabs <laughs> the vaccines in a week and we're finally out of house arrest yay well, uh, the main socialization period is under 16 weeks. So I would just really, really make sure, and I know that's a big thing with, with vets and depends on where you live sometimes too. So I understand that you have to be careful, but you gotta remember your window um, is is short. So if she is just about to have all of her jabs, make sure you're playing. Jabs. That's what she said, I like that. <laughs> that's what she said, it's really cute. Make sure you're playing at least, you know, maybe some barking noises or she's listening to dogs play on TV or something like that to desensitize her. And you're doing food work and really building up her confidence. There's so much resiliency training to do in that small six week to 16 week time frame where that's actually their social imprint. It's kind of like a baby, zero to three. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on. Just be really careful about who you introduce her to. No dog parks, none oh, whatsoever. God. You know, maybe just take her for a short little hike. Like you're not going far. You're just hanging out in like, you know, maybe a 50 yard or 100 yard area, you know, walking back and forth. And as dogs, you know, walk by, if they seem friendly, calm, and you could ask the person is, you know, they'll be like, oh, my dog's friendly. Wait, are they good with puppies? Oh, I don't know. Okay, that's all right, we're training anyway, you know. 
it's better if you have a friend that has an older dog that's really tolerant, but that can be really difficult um, to find. My last suggestion would be get in a puppy socialization play group at a Zoom room or a dog trainer might have it. We have Carmen. All, uh, all Petco's have them. Uh, oh, they they usually host them on Saturday and Sunday around like 10, 15 to 11, 15. There you go. So, so they have different age groups, size groups, all that good stuff. Cool. Uh, if you have a local Zoom room around you, they also do a lot of socialization. I already said that. I know, but I'm just reiterating. Okay. Um, all right. Marcus Carrion says, how may I assist my puppy in excited pee? Is there food I can give him to strengthen the bladder? No. No. Uh, it's really just a, it takes up to six months for them to fully have an idea of their brain to their bladder. But if it's excitement pee, we also call it submissive pee. You have to stop rewarding excitement. Can't give affection on greeting. You have to remove all instant gratification. Even yeah. if it's like that submissive, your dog runs up and then like rolls to their back and lets you pet the Don't belly. Don't touch them. Don't touch them. Even if they've already peed and you know they're not going to pee, Don't touch you're em. still rewarding a submissive behavior Bingo. that will lead to excitement. Overly, body. overly submissive yes, overly behavior. Submissive. That kind of behavior, if they're doing the whole wiggle low to the ground and then the roll over. I, mean, I, walk, I walk away. That Yeah, because that, just for context, guys, in the dog world, like if you went to a dog park, don't do that, by the way. But if you went to a dog park and your puppy did that, they'd probably get attacked. And if they don't get attacked, they would draw everybody's interest. They would be on them like flies and She's not right, get I've off. Seen it. It's intense. Yeah. And so you just have to understand you do not want to reward that behavior. So you want to walk. You can even say no. Like, no, get up. Let's go and walk away. Be firm um, about it. I like to pick up my leash. And when I get that roly-poly, yeah. I'll pick up leash. Yeah. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And then I start walking in the opposite direction. Turn back. Sit. Let's go. Turn back. Sit just to basically condition them yep. for a certain thing when you come in the home. Ooh, that reminds me. When you're putting the leash on, I bet they do that too. Even if they're not peeing, they do like the maybe the roll over to the side or the low, low lay down. Don't, don't reward that by clipping the leash on. If the leash is already on, do a little bit of pressure up in the air and use food to guide into a sit and train your puppy to sit for the leash to be clipped on. I had to do that with... Uh, I got a dog over here that I had to do that with a lot where it's like you need to sit and then eventually it took a couple of months but eventually he could lay down and sit with his head high and that was good and he stopped twisting over so many times confidence it's pretty tedious but but keep at it and it'll help um, Marcy Wallace says planning to get our first puppy in about a year but I'm so nervous how do I know if we're ready uh, it's, it, for me it depends on the breed did you research your breed does it fit your lifestyle like are you ready to you know do training the first two years of life that's usually the for, of their life because that's through adolescence that's usually the things I think of what about you Puppy proofing, all the same things. Yeah, puppy, yeah. he means like the um, home puppy proofing. Also, how old are your kids? Are they ready Ooh. for a small yeah. dog or a big dog? Smaller smaller children do better with bigger dogs because they're sturdy and they can take a real good ear pull without turning around and biting a little kid. Yeah, um, he's if talking it's about old, under three. If your yeah. kid is three years old, they can learn how to not do that. <laughs> You hear that? <laughs> she says, yes, please. No, I know. No I've had lots calls. of parents tell me no, and I'm like, mm, no, yes, no, they yes, can. yes, they can. They can. <laughs> uh, it's called them not existing around the puppy for the first year. Yeah. Yeah. Or only existing, not interacting with yes. the puppy. Yeah. I actually, I don't even do a lot of children existence work with actual socialization between the child and the dog because I find that it just, it's too much for the kid. So hang on. You just said existence. Yeah. Oh, right, sorry, I meant socialization. Right. Existence good, socialization bad between child and dog. When they're really, when they're babies. child is old enough to do it. Yeah, when they're babies. You want to you wanna teach kids to respect space first. Really? Is this how it's going to be? Yeah? yeah excuse She's me. Excuse showing the, the camera here. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully that gives you, gives you some idea. Let's jump to a question on here. Um, Charlotte says, having trouble with growling from my 11-month-old puppy. We just got her a week today a week ago today oh trying to determine if it's aggressive or being uncomfortable it doesn't matter either way it's a huge red flag um being uncomfortable also biting the kids when playing sometimes a uh, hard hard nigh if you want to expand on that charlotte uh feel free sorry i'm like wiggling this whole thing go oh, away cancel okay stop stop moving everything Hi. <laughs> um, okay, Charlotte. She burrowed behind your pillow. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, she's trying to get the bean. Guys, can, can you control I your dog? I already pulled her back three times. Can you, well, hold her. 
All right, Bean, down. All right, hmm? Charlotte, what was your question? <laughs> what was Charlotte's question? <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you that. 11 month old. Okay, here we go. I was dealing with puppy over here. No, you weren't. You weren't dealing with her, clearly, Stop because you. she took off. Okay, Charlotte says, 11 month old, they just got a week ago, is growling at them, biting the kids. Here's the thing. If you don't know, oh, sometimes harder at times. Okay. Here's the thing, Charlotte. I do not want to jump the gun and tell you that that's not a good fit for your family and your home, period. It's not a good fit. I don't want to jump the gun and just say that, but I'll have to admit, there's a little part of my brain back here that's like, this dog could make your life really difficult. This dog could even be a little bit dangerous for, um, for your family. And so there's a little bit of that in the back of my brain, but I don't, I want to make sure I give you permission because sometimes people are seeking permission. There's a, a bit of it, this idea that like, oh, you should keep every dog. If you adopted the dog, you should commit. No, it needs to be a good fit for your family, especially if you have children. And a lot of rescues support that because yes. it prevents you from bringing them back two years later, like a client that I'm currently working with. Yep. Kimberly, I'm going to pass Lucy off. She's, she's, good. she's getting restless. So if you need permission, <laughs> you've got it, honey, because I worked in the rescue world for years. He works with rescues and, and you've just got to know that this could be a long road yep. or, or it could be easy, easier. You could, you definitely need in-home training. There is no doubt about that. Do not wait another second. You are spending the evening researching balanced trainers. And when you ask um, about their methods, do they teach no? Do they use tools? How do they teach no to the dog? What kind of training do they do? Food training? What kind of foundation do they lay out for the puppy? Because this is an 11 month old puppy. It's an adolescent puppy. It should, it deserves a foundation. It doesn't deserve someone coming in and just being like, no, 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 correct growling, correct this. No, like that's, that's not gonna happen right from the beginning in, in our opinion. You need a little bit of a foundation structure in the home. The children need to be giving space to the puppy to let the puppy breathe and settle in. And you're in confidence building, foundation building mode. 11 weeks old. Oh, that's totally oh, different. Oh, that's completely different. That's totally different. Okay, so hang on. Let me finish. Totally let me nasty. finish. I could have swore I saw 11 months. My, my, my fault. Um, let me finish for the 11 month old. So the 11 month old, it's like they need that first. The kids are com it's actually not much different, come to think of it. Mm -hmm. And then you would layer on, you know, some firmer nose when needed, like much firmer because it's an older adolescent dog. Now she just told me, oh, autocorrect. So she did ac accidentally say month. So Charlotte just told us that um, it's actually 11 weeks old, not 11 months old. Okay. So I would say that the genetics, if, if the puppy's already growling at you, the genetics aren't amazing, but um, this puppy might settle in just fine. You, honestly, 11 weeks old, I, I would go to thepuppyacademy.com and check out our online school and see what you think about it. I would do that and then I would also get at least two to three lessons with an in-home trainer just to help you set up your home, talk to your kids, better boundaries. Like the kids shouldn't be on top of the puppy very much. It should just be confidence building, confidence building. Wait a month and see if the growling goes away. If the growling doesn't go away, then you need to have a new conversation with your family about, you know, do you want to keep this puppy? Because if it's still growling, even under a little bit of pressure in a month, and I know this might um, ruffle some feathers, but that means there's some genetic disposition to where that puppy is gonna choose that when it's uncomfortable, and adolescence hasn't even hit yet. And in adolescence- You'll have a biter. You'll, yeah, or more likely to, even if not your family, you'll more likely to be reactive, things like that. But this puppy may just need to settle in and stop having so many pets and pressure put on the puppy. Even if it seems like the puppy is liking it, I can assure you it's overstimulating the puppy. So anyway, that would be my advice. We should probably go ahead and move on. I find that puppies that age only have about 30 seconds to a minute, like max to get affection unless it's they're at the done. end of the night and they're already like basically passed out for the rest of yeah. the night <laughs> like lucy was <laughs> yeah like lucy was but even after 15 20 minutes of, uh, 15 minutes of training max for a puppy that age you might get maybe a minute minute and a half if you're lucky but the minute you start seeing the dog start looking at that hand 
you're done petting. Yeah. That's that's time for crazy. They they just got the puppy a week ago. They may not even know what you mean by like the 15, 20 minutes training. Like what are you supposed to do? Like you're starting, you know, you're starting at, at, at baseline. So you just need to be building resiliency, confidence, food work, targeting, boundaries, you need schedule. To check out our online school. Yeah. And then also 100%. and and then also a one on one person, a couple times to the home yep. to really set you guys on the on the right track. Okay. Uh, what time is it? Oh, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, we got five minutes. Let's see. Did I miss any on this page? Yes, I did. How long to leave a puppy in the crate? That was a video that we did, and we got a question from it. Okay. We also got chewed apart a little bit for it, too. We did? When? Yeah. Uh, last week. Right here? Oh, okay. That's not relevant. They don't know what you're talking about. Um, when you have a puppy in the crate, they need to rest and nap for a really young puppy about 18, 20 hours, for an older puppy about 16, 20 hours. So we made a video mentioning that and why, the when and the why and the how. And we got a little bit of flack for it because Somebody's, a lot of people yeah. want to spend time with their puppies and that was the biggest complaint. You have a long-term gain from a short-term loss on loss of time as a young puppy for long-term gain of having a really well-rounded, well, really well-mannered dog by the time they hit one or two years old. Okay, I, I could more, I could say more, but we gotta move on because that's not even part of it. Okay. It's all relevant. No, it's not. Natalie says, do you have any suggestions on how to keep a puppy in crate without me around? If I leave him, he'll cry until I come back. See if he'll cry it out. Some puppies like kids, which is also controversial, the whole cry it out thing. But some puppies will just cry it out and they'll get over it. But there are things you can do to make him more comfortable. Don't spoil him when he's out of crate. Make sure you don't represent- no affection. Yeah, don't, don't, make, don't make yourself represent so much excitement. Hi puppy, you know, puppy come, yay, all the time. Puppy break, woo, to yeah. come out of the crate. And then you're like, crate, shut door, I'm leaving. Like there needs to be some balance calm 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 confident is like the new kind of buzzword um in our world but it's good it's a good it's a good buzz phrase okay so calm confidence is what you want to represent 90 percent of the time to your puppy 10 percent excitement maybe but when you're touching your puppy it needs to be calm calm pets you want to represent more calm not excitement or you'll never be able to leave your and house make sure you don't end the training and all the time out of the crate with love and then put them right in the crate because yep. they're basically going in there and saying you just gave me love why would i want to stay in here yeah cause it it causes straight. anxiety because yep. you made their brain be in like follower mode yeah. and so it causes anxiety plus make it comfortable you know cover the crate play um uh some uh, some noise you know in the background and make sure it's like a dark room uh what's the other thing if you have a fan or a white noise machine that can really help too Friends soundtrack. Yes, yeah. Sitcoms TV. work really well. <laughs> uh, when can you leave a puppy out of the crate or playpen longer during the day? That was a, a video that we did. That's not the question. That was a video that we when did. Perfect. Which you can find these videos in our feed on Instagram, which would probably take forever. You can also go to YouTube. Okay. Somebody says, My dog hates the crate. Cries, whines, accidents on the way outside. The um, outside hates the outside. Has accidents on the way to outside. My dog hates the outside. Oh. I don't understand. Let me see. Okay, hang on. Sorry. Hang on. Let me read the whole thing first, and then maybe we'll know. My dog hates the outside. Cries, whines, has accidents on the way until we pick him up. He potties and then rushes to go back into inside. The door, yeah, okay, so you know, you're right, yeah. My dog, sorry, we were thinking it had to do with crate, so I'm really sorry, it's Big Bex, um, so that's why we're discombobulated, because we're like, this doesn't have anything to do with the crate, but it's still a good question, we're gonna answer it. I've tried everything, high reward treats, running around, sitting, noises, I don't know how old your puppy is, I wish I had age or breed or something to give me a little bit more of an idea. Um, Our advice change, changes firmness depending on the age of the dog. Yeah, like can you use the leash? Does he understand, have you taught him leash pressure? Like, I, like it just, I have an idea if it's six months old, then I'm gonna assume it understands the leash and you can really help, you know, with the leash. But anyway, it's not about using high value treats to get him outside. For me, I would just be, I'd be setting up shop outside a lot. Like I'm gonna get like a little awning or I mean a little umbrella and I'm gonna work at my computer and my puppy is outside, just really getting used to being outside. And then I would only feed your puppy outside. So unless your puppy is underweight 
or one of those micro to like poodle pocket things. 1.2 pounds yeah unless it's like super tiny which hopefully ounces. it's not um, then I would only feed your puppy outside and your puppy can skip a few days like it really really can uh, by few I mean two to three at the most and then it's like okay now you got to figure if something out if they're at out. the proper weight though if, if they're, they're, at the if proper they're already weight. too skinny you're seeing ribs like that's different. last se last second last third last then, then you, you can't. can't you can't hold out as long you could hold out for one or two meals and that's about it but yeah it would be the same if your puppy was scared of the car it's like start feeding meals outside just you know you're you're offering it to them if they don't take it that's their choice and you wait till the the next meal and you can yep. sweeten the pot like if you want to try you know high value treats I'm, i bet if you go down to ralph's and go get a rotisserie chicken and just use the white meat so you don't get diarrhea no skin i mean i bet that that would really help your cause a lot and you start just really working with them outside the final thing I would do is no affection inside. I would only um, wait, first I would wait till my puppy got more comfortable outside. And I would do all my training and stuff like that outside. Inside, I'd be so boring. I'm a yep. boring human inside. All right, do you have anything else to add to that? I do, but it's gonna take too long. Okay, good. User 50 something something says, can you please talk about how long a puppy can hold their poop? Nine months old, and very often he will not hold his poop overnight. Uh, when are you feeding them? If you're feeding yeah. them at 7, 8 p.m., that's probably why. A dog like that probably has to be fed at like 5, 6 p.m. Make sure you get them out for one final potty before they go to bed. And even if you go to bed at 11.30 and your puppy goes in the crate at 9, your puppy leaves that crate at 11.30 right before you go to bed, gets a final potty. Because when you go to sleep, that's when they're, or when they hit the crate and they do their final potty, that's when their poop timer starts. Yeah. And they might only last till 3 a.m. if they go to bed by 9 p.m. And, and also, you know, what is their walk schedule like? What's their exercise schedule true. like? If it's all over the place, then yeah, it might be difficult to pinpoint that down. But if you can get on some sort of schedule, excuse me, just until your dog does, maybe he just needs a 15 minute night walk to get his, his stomach moving. And then an hour later, maybe he'll poop before bed. You know what I mean? So play around with that. Food makes a huge difference huge you might be on a food where your dog poops three a nine month old three to four times a day and switch to a different type of food and it goes down to twice a day i would uh, talk to your vet about that different quality of foods i'm not going to name brands because i don't no. want to get destroyed by that you but can't. uh you're looking at anything that has anywhere between 26 to 20 percent crude protein and low percentage of fat. Only uh, really young puppies need high percentages of fat for their growth, and usually puppies need anywhere between 32 to 38% crude protein, but now pro f different dog foods are making like 42, 44, 45% crude protein. It's too much protein, they don't use it, and it becomes additional waste, which means more poop. Yeah. An exception if you're, you know, running a ton with your dog. But if he's, you know, I don't know. You're gonna, I think I would play with food. That would actually be my first thing. I'm gonna say one brand, but it's not tearing it apart. It's yeah, it's gotta be positive. It. So uh, Natural Balance LID Limited Ingredient Diet. Their protein ratio, I believe, for their rabbit and their uh, their fish is 26% crude protein. That's a really good one if you're getting too many poops throughout the day. It's also all life stages, so you're not only giving it to a certain t like age of dog and get it at any age. Let me ask you a question. This is, can I, I don't have time for a question. All right. Uh, it, was, it was a nutritional question. He knows quite a bit about it. I'll ask you later. I'm and curious. Maybe now, we though. can bring it back to you guys next week. Just ask <laughs> All right, Erica, real quick. I currently have a designated area for the puppy to roam and play. Um, his crate is in that area, but when we leave, he whines and cries. You need to also have an area in a quiet room. It's like putting a baby to sleep. A really important dark room. Um, during It's during daylight hours. Dark room, music, you know, sound machine going to help him him actually rest if your puppy is out like this all day they're not resting when you are home your puppy should be away from you during their crate time when you leave yeah. and you're gonna be gone for four to eight hours and you don't have a chance to like give your puppy an opportunity to go potty that's when I do the big playpen the crate inside of it potty pad on the opposite side from the crate food and water kind of close to the crate. So that's when you make more of a room setup for them. But when you're there, your puppy needs to spend time away from you. And that's what's gonna work through the whining and the crying. And uh, we do have a couple of YouTube questions and we will save those for next week. All right, bye guys, thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining us guys, see you next week. Bye. I can smell.